Greetings, Crimson here. Over the past week of Early Access, I have played a total of 53 hours of multiverses. This has already surpassed the measly 21 hours I invested into Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl. My peak rating in 1v1s was 869, though I have fallen significantly to around the 6000s recently and will probably be falling further. However, I am happy that I have performed as well as I have. My first impressions of the game is that it's loads of fun and has a stacked roster full of great characters. I am a bit sad that there is no Scooby-Doo, Joker, or Daffy Duck, and am very disappointed that one of these slots were taken to add in LeBron instead, but I can't really complain too much since the game also includes Shaggy, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Bugs Bunny, and Tom and Jerry, plus the rest. This game gives me a nostalgic feeling similar to what I felt way back in the day when I was playing Super Smash Bros. 64 for the first time. One of the reasons I got so invested into games like this back then was because I got to play as characters that I love such as Mario, Luigi, Pikachu, Link, and Fox. That same feeling is now being portrayed with multiverses and I am enjoying every second of it. Overall, most of my matches seem to have a stable connection. I do have problems, but they're nowhere near as bad as the connection issues I was facing with Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl, where it felt as if every other match had significant lag. On top of the fact that Multiverses is free, has proper voice acting, and looks pretty damn good, the current player base is knocking it out of the park. According to the Steam charts, Multiverses is already at 144,000 players. Compare this to Nick Brawl's all-time peak of 9,000. It just seems ridiculous, maybe I'm reading the data wrong, but these numbers feel insane, and definitely seem to indicate a brighter future than what the Nickelodeon's counterpart had. Now, I have been avoiding other people's content about this game because I wanted to experience everything myself towards the beginning of this game's life cycle. So if there are any high-level techniques that have been discovered, such as wave dashing or L cancelling, I am currently unaware of them. However, I don't believe there is any wave dashing in this game, but that is fine with me. I like that this game seems relatively simple, because I feel as if it makes it easier to attract more players. One of the issues I noticed back when Nick Brawl was released was that almost every match felt like a duel to the death. And if you didn't have experience playing Super Smash Bros. at a high level, or you were just a casual, then you would get stomped on, even at the lower ratings. In Multiverses, it definitely feels as if the progression is paced slightly better. Even at the higher ratings that I have reached, it seems as if the game tries to match you with other opponents closer to your character level. So if you are using a new character for the first time, it will be less likely that you end up getting blown out of the water by someone who has reached level 30. This game may not be implementing wave dashes or L canceling, but I believe that this game still has a high skill ceiling and am looking forward to seeing tournament matches in the near future. I should mention that Ranked Ladder is currently not in the game. The matchmaking appears to attempt to face you against someone close enough to your MMR rating which can be viewed in the latter section of your career page. Your MMR decides your ranking, and the game seems to simulate a type of ranked mode to ensure your opponents are close to you in skill level. So even though there may not be a ladder system just yet, it does act similar to a ranked system anyways. If you are a new player to this type of genre, I would recommend giving Shaggy, Finn, or Wonder Woman a try for your first character, However, if you have a character you absolutely love, and you are already set on the idea of maining that character, then feel free to just start using them right away. Depending on the complexity of the character, it might be difficult to understand how to properly utilize them, but the main focus of a game should always be to have as much fun as possible, especially since the game gives you 3000 gold to start off with, which is the in-game currency, and is enough to purchase any single character off of the roster. Overall, I would say that I'm pleasantly surprised and happy with how this game turned out. Even though I have run into a decent amount of bugs during the beta phase already. At the very least, I recommend giving this game a try to see if you would like it, and I would like to thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video.